Hello, it's James A Photography and just another video on something that I want to sort of redo. Now I did a video years and years ago when I first started on the Nikon D750 and all you see is my hands really talking about it. So this is like a part two, Nikon D750 because I've had two of them, I've got two of them and I've used them for years and I've absolutely beasted them in all kinds of sort of weddings mainly. But yeah, I've used these as my main cameras for a long, long time now. Um, so I've really put them through their paces. Whereas when I did that first video, I sort of only had it a little while. I knew the capabilities of it and the power, but and I knew it was the camera that I wanted to use. But um, it's just it's like a second time review um, on this camera if you're thinking of getting it. Now, partly for this video is, is this camera still worth it in 2020? Considering the new wave of cameras, the mirrorless and everything, um, and that's what I'm going to talk about really. Um, I think it's an absolute bargain. It really is because you can get it pretty cheap now. Uh, DSLRs are getting less and less sort of popular now because everybody wants mirrorless. Let's face it, if you're going to buy a new full frame camera, it's probably going to be a Sony. I don't know, whatever. But um, yeah, the new mirrorless cameras are amazing um, and they definitely do appeal. So when these blow up, I will move over to those one day but for now i'm still happy with the nikon d750 and i've always got two of them with me um, and that has been my camera of choice and i'm going to talk about that in case you're looking for a bit of a bargain but an absolute powerhouse an absolute beast of a bargain brand new they dropped a lot in price but second hand if you look around a lot you can get a pretty good condition one with low shutter speed on it for less than I don't know, a mid-range crop sensor camera now, um, brand new, and what a camera you're getting. So I'm just gonna talk about my experience and is the D750 still worth it in 2020 and my opinion. Now, I'm not an expert on mirrorless cameras. I've had a play around with them and I know what they're all about, but um, you know when you know something really, really well, I just know this camera. I know what the output is and I know what they do. Because at the end of the day, your clients or whatever you photograph for, all they see is the images. They don't care where it came from. They don't care about whether it had eye autofocus or pet tracking or all these weird and wonderful gadgets. Um, they don't care. The image quality is what matters at the end of the day. And I have not had one complaint about the image quality from the Nikon D750. I've never had a client say, um, that's not a mirrorless one or that's not the latest whatever like you know it's just it's the image quality and in all fairness you can use cameras that are a lot lot older for, for amazing photographs now because all the clients see or whatever your audience sees perhaps it's just on Instagram or something or perhaps you do stuff for a website or a blog or a lifestyle thing all they're going to see is the images and that's what matters at the end of the day. So I'm just going to talk about my experience I think it's thoroughly worth it if you if you're quite happy going back to DSLR um, this is a beast, absolute beast. You can sort of go mirrorless with it, with the live view, it's, it's cracked at the moment, but that's like a screen protector, it's not the actual screen, they're of like a fiver on Amazon or something. So you can use the live view a lot on this, and it flips out as well, which is quite handy, it has its place. Um, so I use the live view sometimes if I wanna check and everything, but most of the time, I'm on all kinds of weird and wonderful settings, and just gonna talk about this camera. So it's 24 megapixel, that's more than enough for me, more than enough for my clients. Um, I've cropped quite heavily on that as well, like weddings and stuff. I've cropped images down to like nearly 50%. And let's face it, most images you give your you know, wedding couples or whatever you're doing, there aren't, they're not gonna you know, print an absolutely ginormous image out of it. Usually it's just gonna be viewed on like a tablet or even a wedding album, you know. So cropping down to sort of 10, 12% uh, megapixel, sorry, on this is absolutely fine. So what's my experience with this thing? Well, the image output is incredible, absolutely incredible on this thing. So if you're happy to go back to the old way of with just a normal viewfinder and without like eye tracking and all this sort of stuff, then I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend the D750. <laughs> As a Nikon user, I don't know what the Canon equivalent is and all the others, but from a Nikon user, you could get, say, a Nikon D610 or something like that, but what are you getting with the Nikon D750? 
it's just a beast. It's an absolute beast. I've really put them through their paces and they've never, ever let me down the pair of them, never. Um, so it's kind of like, say you bought an old car, a 10 year old supercar, but could still keep up with the latest, greatest supercar. Like the latest supercar will have all the latest gadgets and sat nav and all the bells and whistles. But as far as raw nuts and bolts power go, the output, the old car can just about, well, can still keep up. And that's what this is, it's an absolute savage. And it's in quite a tiny package as well. It's like, when you strip it down, it's great for travel as well. The grip on it is amazing. So when I take it on holidays and stuff, that grip is really, really good. Um, if you put a little lens on it, like a little prime or a small zoom or something, you know, a little 50 mil prime 1.8 is small on this. And my favorite, one of my favorites, 35 mil 1.8, the DX1, watch the video if you don't know about that, which worked well on this. Um, it's quite a small little thing. It's not a great big bulky like Nikon D4S or D5 or something like that, or a D810, which is like a brick. Um, great cameras, but yeah, it's really good. Video, forget it. I mean, it can video stills, 1080p and all that, but autofocus and video, just forget about that. So if you're interested in video, this is not the camera to get. Get, a, get one of the newer ones, like a Sony or a Fuji or Panasonic, anything like that. But as far as out and out photos, I've beasted this thing through weddings especially. I'm sort of doing more and more commercial work lately. Um, not, I'm still getting weddings, but I'm sort of veering towards more commercial work. But that can be events and everything. I've had quite a lot of events lately for a catering company that do events uh, showcasing food and colleges and students learning and chefs teaching them and all that. And that is hard, really, really hard. I've done quite a lot for them. And chefs don't wait for you. When they're in the kitchens and they're moving fast, they don't st stand still or nothing. It is really hard work photographing chefs at work, teaching and training and cooking in kitchens and all what goes on. And the autofocus and thing, it's just never let me down. It's just savage. So um, low light weddings, low light anything, low light events, the autofocus again, absolute beast. ISO on this, I'm happy to push this to 10,000, maybe 12,000 ISO. The dynamic range on this thing, absolute monster dynamic range. Yeah, the newer cameras may be a tad powerful, but this is more than powerful enough. The dynamic range on this blew me away. Before this, I had the Nikon D600, and I thought that was a beast, um, which it is. Um, but the dynamic range on this is even better and even cleaner. It's just, what you can pull out the shadows of this thing just is insane for an old camera. I know the new ones are probably a bit better, but this is more than enough, more than enough to get you out of trouble. The metering on it, just everything on it. The only thing, the only weakness I think it has is the buffer. Um, the buffer can clog up, but what I found is, are they in there? Let's have a look. Oh no, the wrong ones. These are the wrong cards. No, nope. I use the SanDisk Extreme Pros. They're a little bit more expensive, but I have two in there with RAW. And the buffer will fill up, but I'm not doing like high-end sports or nothing. The buffer does fill up quick, but it doesn't stop. So the buffer will go buh, 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 like fast. And then when it clogs up, it will still take a picture every like, I don't know, half a second. It will go ching, 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 and it won't stop. So it'll always do that. Whereas on the D600, the buffer would fill up. It would go do, 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 and you're like, come on, you're missing moments. Whereas with this, when it feels like, as long as you have fast, right speed cards, the buff, it will keep taking photos, like ching, 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 which is for weddings, usually enough to, you know. But that's the only weakness on this thing, is the buffer. Some people moaned about the lack of another button there. So I use that for back button focusing. I might do another video on that because my first one is so long-winded. <laughs> I'm saying that there's not one there for AEL lock and ISO and all that business, but um, I changed the record button to ISO, which is really handy. So you don't have to keep reaching down here. Um, and you can change that to other things. Plus you've got your customizable buttons and everything. But if you use back button focusing, that isn't a problem. It really isn't. You don't need the, I've got the AEL lock down there and the autofocus there. 
and some people complain saying oh it hasn't got the two buttons like more pro ones but that's fine i really like the u1 and the u2 on this like the customizable settings so as soon as i go to flash photography or using off camera flash i just stick it straight to u1 and my base setting is there um, and then i can sort of change the variables a bit but straight away and u2 as well it's for shutter speed i have it on a really fast shutter speed um, shutter priority and that way if I see something really fast happen I say I'm just wandering around you know moseying around and then I see like a jet you know flying through stick it on that bang and I know it's gonna be a fast shutter speed so that's quite handy and you got all your ports in that as well video I've done a bit of it it's all right but focusing forget it you sort of manual focus if you're a manual focuser with video then you'll be fine doesn't do 4K, but the, you know, the image quality is good. Um, yeah, so my review on the D750. I've absolutely beasted these. I've taken them on holiday, travel, travel jobs, um, nothing too adventurous. And weddings, events, portrait, commercial, just literally everything. I've beasted these for about four years now. And they've never let me down. I had one recalled with the shutter recall. It didn't have a shutter problem, but it had to go in for something because I broke the mount um, and I had it repaired. And while it was in Nikon, they did the recall as well. So um, that's all right, but I've never had a problem with it. So that's my review on the Nikon D750. Uh, it's an absolute beast. You can get some good lenses for it as well. Older lenses that, that are amazing, astonishing. At the end of the day, it's image quality at the end of the day. And getting the images, this thing has no problem at all. So hope it helps if you're looking like for an older camera, that's a lot cheaper now, but still has the beast-like power and capabilities of all the new modern cameras. Hope it helped.